Today we're going to be talking about the device tab located in audio. We'll look at the audio interface settings options so you can optimize Reaper for yours. We will also see what WhatsApp is and how to set it appropriately. As always, if this video is useful to you, don't hesitate to share it, helping to make Reaper better known, which I consider the Unix or better the Linux of the DOS. Device tab. The first setting is the audio system drop down menu. From here, you can choose different audio devices. The first is Windows Direct Music or WDM kernel streaming, a technology first used on Windows NT when Windows 98 used the VXDS, then integrated stably starting with Windows XP after being imported into Windows 2000 to create a streaming kernel. It has an efficient real-time processing of multimedia streams, therefore excellent for use with audio interfaces, as it allows faster access and low latency in communication. Audio streaming, therefore, goes from the application, Reaper, to the operating system and from it to the sound card and vice versa. WDM allows the use of input and output interfaces different from each other. So, from the input device menu, choose the input interface, and from output device, the output one, which can also coincide with the input one. Set the sampling format, sample format field, being able to choose between the three proposed values, 16, 24 and 32-bit integer type, not flow type. The number in brackets indicates which formats are accepted by the input interface you have selected. I show you how by changing it, this value also changes. Input channels, output channels. You can determine how many channels to use for the inputs and how many for the outputs respectively. Set the desired sample rate as long as the interface supports it. In fact, look at the value in brackets, it tells you what is the minimum and maximum sample rate for each interface. Buffers. This setting allows you to optimize the latency against the performance of your interface. Latency is a relationship between the value of samples and the sample rate. In this case, with 96 kHz and 512 samples, the latency is 5.3 milliseconds, 512 over 96,000. So, I have determined that there is only one buffer. Increasing the number of buffers automatically increases the block of samples, as if it were a multiplier of buffers. The correct settings can be reached experimentally, because a lot depends on the quality of the audio interface, above all its drivers and on the computer being used. A thumb rule is to lower this value to the point where the first problems are encountered, for example, until the audio rapes apart, and then raise it a few points to maintain a safe area. The other usable audio system is direct sound. It is a deprecated component of Microsoft Directs. In addition to the essential use for audio services, it allowed the use of recording and audio mixing. Since Windows CE 5.0, it has been removed. I therefore imagine that on Reaper it continues to be used for compatibility on old systems. The parameterization is identical to the one seen just a few minutes ago. Wave Out has the same parameters as Direct Sound. It is a system employed in Windows 95, 98, ME, and T4, therefore quite old. It uses more CPU than the lighter and is mainly used on 32-bit systems. It's kept in Reaper for compatibility with those who insist on using old computers. If you're using Windows XP or 7 or higher, avoid it. Azure Azure stands for Audio Stream Input Output. It's a protocol created by Steinberg, which allows for very low latency. Communication takes place directly from the DAW to the audio interface via the drivers, avoiding passing through the operating system kernel. It has nothing to do with Azure for All. The latter is a type of Azure driver created to support all cards, but since there is not native Azure support, there are reductions in performance. Therefore, do not confuse Azure for All with the Azure we are looking at. 
In the Azure Driver drop-down menu, choose the physical or virtual sound card you want to work with. Enable inputs enables the inputs you choose in the first and last drop-down menu. In first, select the first interface input channel, in last, the last channel. In output range, select the outputs with the same logic with which you select the inputs. By enabling request sample rate, Reaper forces the sound card to sample other rates set in this field, regardless of how it is set in preferences. The same can be said for request block size, which in Reaper means buffer size. As indicated by Schwa himself, one of the Reaper's two main programmers in his 2011 post. Pre-zero output buffers. It fills the buffers with silence before filling them with valid audio. It might be useful in some cases when the Azure driver or Reaper does something wrong and a buffer has not been filled completely with valid audio. It is not possible for me to show you what is happening. In any case, if you work on a PC that is perhaps not quite reliable, activate this option even if it uses a little more CPU. Ignore Azure reset messages. Another setting that's only useful if you have problems with sound card drivers. For example, in the event that despite everything you have some dropouts, try to activate this option to try to eliminate the problem. Dummy audio. It's a dummy driver, which is for debugging purposes only. Wasapi. The term Wasapi, whatever you pronounce it, doesn't indicate a Japanese course, but the acronym for Windows Audio Session API. In turn, API stands for Application Programming Interface. By selecting this driver, you can record any sound coming from your computer. For instance, the audio from YouTube, rather than from Spotify, and also the system sounds. In the Mode pop-up menu, select the appropriate recording mode. Wasapi is a technology from Microsoft that uses methods to directly send audio to the hardware output. With exclusive mode, most Blu-ray and DVD playback software uses this because it allows playback of Dolby and DTS encoded surround sound through the digital audio output. Furthermore, this mode will not allow other applications to use the hardware at the same time, which instead is obtainable through the shared mode. Audio Thread Priority Almost all programs running on Windows have the normal priority. When the job scheduler examines all the tasks whose work to be done has identical priority, it sorts them according to the one that has been running the longest. Higher priority tasks will run earlier than lower priority tasks, even if they were active more recently. So higher priority programs can override other programs running at the same time. This can help prevent audio dropouts, which can occur if the buffer becomes empty before Windows returns to the dough for its next time slot. My advice if you don't know what to do is to leave the default. Allow projects to override device sample rate. By default it is enabled. It means that each project can have a different sample rate than the default one and is taken into account instead of the default one. For example, Alt and Enter. In the first tab I set the sample rate of the project to 96 kHz, but the default is 48 kHz. The sample rate that will be used is that of the project, that is 96 kHz. With this option disabled, the sample rate that will be used in this default in the settings, as I said, 48 kHz. Please consider supporting this channel by becoming a patron or just at least pay me a beer. The links for one or the other options are in the description down below. That's it for the moment. Thanks for watching.